Hi guys. It is freezing. Um, right, I'm gonna try and cast this. <laughs> I've also bought some more green sand and I've just opened it and it's not at all sticky. I assumed it would have bentonite. I've never bought ready-made green sand before. Uh, maybe that isn't a thing and I'm gonna have to add bentonite. Anyway, it's kind of disappointing because I wanted to just get on with this rather than um, sort my sand out first. One little bit of news before I cast this. I'm gonna do it in uh, aluminium. Uh, I'm gonna have to shorten it because my flasks are small at the moment, but it's just a sort of a test for the shape. I've printed one more module. Okay, so it's a, a sort of a beefy centre section. I'm hoping that these sort of fatter columns will be a nice place to put uh, handles. If someone's got a, their own design or something, they could just cast this. So I thought instead of a handle piece like this, perhaps it might be easier and actually more accurate to bolt uh, a piece of tubing I don't think that's beyond anyone who's doing metal casting. And then the beauty of that being, you can have two bolts holding it to there and one bolt going all the way through, which is also the pin. So a lot of people on the last video said, instead of having two corner pieces, which are different, one with a dovetail and one without a dovetail, why didn't you just make them the center section, the handle bit, have a double nail or a double uh, slot, and then you can just have the same set and sort of have them working towards the middle. Well, the reason I didn't, I did think about it. The reason I didn't was I didn't want to force anyone into using any particular module. Some people might not like this. When I was looking at sections without that, I was thinking actually they're not that bad to put a handle on anyway. And if I made any piece, not just the, cent the central piece, but if I made any piece uh, special, as in a double dovetail or a double slot, it would have forced people to have that in their setup. Whereas at least this way, the only thing they have to have is one corner piece with a slot and one corner piece with a dovetail. All the rest are optional. I thought that was a better, more flexible way of doing it. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna cast this in one of them just as a test. I'm gonna cast this too. Another reason that the handle piece might not be ideal for most people, is that it's very tall. So you're going to need at least, at least initially, a flask with a fair depth to it. Uh, I mean, I have got this one, which I think I use for my kettlebells, so I had to make it big. So that's going to be one side, and that's going to be the other side. Right, enough talk. Let's, let's try some casting. So yeah, that's what that was. There's a little notepad where I'm writing down ideas as they come to me or as they're sort of um, mentioned on comments and things. These might be a bit too beefy. There's quite a lot of aluminium in there. Hopefully we're not going to get any shrinkage. I mean, we're going to get some, but hopefully... I think the most important thing is to have this top edge decent. Let's try it. Uh, I've sort of forgotten what to do. I don't know if you can still see, I've basically I've got the short one here, I think I might have pressed, forgotten to press record, short one here and the long one at the back. You guys don't want to see me making up the flask anyway. Okay, only the flat surfaces are visible. That means that the, the 45 degree side bits are sunken down in that sand. This is the first time I've ever, ever done a casting where everything wasn't at the parting line. I've got to dig down to it. 
So this is a big, uh, a big step for me. I think I've got to scoop away until I see the far edge. No, the nearest edge. Then re-parting powder it, and then put the cope on top of this. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. God, it's been ages. Usually all my parts, I make sure that the parting line is where the sort of widest part of the part is. But as you can see, the part goes into the sand. So I've got to dig it out. I've seen Perry do this. And more recently, I've seen Melton Cast do this, Andy. I think he's very knowledgeable. He's been possibly been doing it for quite a long time. But his channel is quite new, or at least it's a small channel. I reckon we should get him a few extra subscribers. If you fancy seeing another guy casting and making cool stuff. All right, so I'm gonna focus in on this one now and try and do the same. Oh God, what an idiot. 45 degree angle goes into the sand. So I need to kind of get to that so that I can take the pattern out eventually. very corners are not revealed yet. All right. I kind of went a little bit under there. That was because I was rushing. That's not ideal. You might get a bit of breakage when I Anyway, that's something to look out for. All right, so that's that one done, I think. All right, now I've got to do it on the other one. I might need a bigger flask when I do these. I thought that I might go up to the wood. Oh, that's not good. I have to keep, hmm. I want some sand there, because it's got to have draft. Okay, All right, well, this will be interesting. Right, last one. Oh, it's even closer on this side. Hmm. I've actually forgotten how massive, how unbelievably heavy this is gonna be. See, when, they're, when the wooden flasks are kind of only had a few castings in them, they're perfectly nice. It's just when you've, once you've done sort of 10 or 15, they're just so bad. Time for the sprue. I'm not gonna put in any feeders. I'm just gonna see how it goes. Right. This thing is going to be so heavy. I hope I've got enough sand to fill it. I'm nearly out of sand. So I'm going to have to use, thank God I've ordered some more green sand. It's a shame it doesn't bloom in work though. Uh, I'm going to have to kind of mix, mix a little batch. Lovely and red. Well, I can, I've done my best. I've made up a whole load of new green sand. I only need two and a half inches worth, but that's actually quite a lot. I've sort of 50-50 mixed it with a few bucketfuls of my old sand. So 
fingers crossed it'll do for this at least and then once it's all mixed with all the rest it should kind of right I'm just going to sift it in because it's just as another final final mix this is going to be so heavy already. I'd turn it down a bit. At it. I'm not sure one crucible is going to do it, but we'll have to just try. of uh, sand there. Whoa, what a shame. Alright, let's try this. Not quite there. Go get my drill. Okay, here goes. Ah, got it. I wonder if I can get lucky. Oh, 
no. Uh, okay. Well, so that's a shame. That's stuck right in there. Got it. Well, it's that way around. I'm just going to do it. Now I'm going to lift that. And put it on that. Pour a little bit into there first. Right. Here you guys. Still going in. Oh, that's it, it's full. Well, that's a bit of that. Here we go. Woo! Oh God, that could be my most expensive pour. So my camera was up here, my lovely GH5, and I was rushing to get it sorted out. I thought I clipped it on, and 
I don't know, maybe I need to spend, I've been spending like 20 quid per little plate. And that to me is a lot of money. So, but I can see why photographers now spend a hundred quid per kind of plate because I, I thought I fastened it. And the second I let go, the camera just toppled off, hit the floor. I guess luckily it hit the lens, but the lens now doesn't zoom or focus. So that could be an expensive mistake. Luckily the camera body seems okay. What a night, absolutely drained. After having to make all that sand up and lift that heavy flask, I've also just seen a huge rat run across the uh, back of the workshop, uh, the size of a small dog, and dropping my camera, absolutely gutted about that. Thankfully, I've got some prime lenses that I use uh, in dark conditions, and they're fixed, they're prime, they don't zoom in. So my, uh, my camera is now 10 foot back there, so I can't really see anything. And setting it up is harder. I'm just hoping it'll be, it should be nice and clear though, because it's a prime lens. Oh, just gutted. Uh, and, the, and the sand sticking in the, um, in the holes. I've still yet to look inside. It could be not as bad as I think. The draft on this possibly is a little too tight. It's seven degrees. Right, enough moping. Let's have a look. You're gonna see it before I do. So I think part of the problem could be the draft. The other part of the problem is, I've always found that the first time you use these PLA patterns, they just don't work right. What they need is a whole load of parting powder to get in all those little nooks and crannies. The second and third time you use them, it's loads better. So I should have spent a lot longer putting parting in there. Plus also, I think I need to redesign the backs and just have it so that it, you can insert a screw. Because removing this one with these big things was a nightmare and the sand stayed in there possibly because the draft in there is only seven degrees. So I'm trying to salvage something from this disastrous night. The pour was dubious. It seemed slow and I completely filled this to the very brim, like within a millimeter of the top. And in a way it's a good thing I did, but um, I only had that much left over. Enough talking. <laughs> They look like flask sides. Uh, uh, uh. Well, well, they're quite hot still. I think that's pretty cool. I'll take that for a first go. Be interesting to see if, if this worked, these in here, the, the bit I stuck in by hand. This uh, is obviously solid and it shouldn't be. Let's have a look. I need to sort out the, uh, the gates. I was sort of, by the time I'd run out of diesel and I had to make my own five gallons of sand. I was just in no state to be pouring metal. And then I dropped my camera. Well, oh, the backs look all right. Let's just say it could definitely be worse. Uh, it could certainly be better but I'm trying to salvage something from this terrible night. Save everyone's eardrums. There we go. Now, 
There's the back. Quite nice flat 45s. Impressed with that. The top edges look nice, and that's what I was worried about. There's no kind of, there doesn't seem to be any shrinking. Um, so this isn't supposed to be as massive as it is. That should have been a gap like that. But you can see there is some shrinkage in there. That's, but that's the only spot there. So underneath these sandy areas, basically under here, which is the thickest part, there's a bit of shrinkage. And by the look of it, it didn't do very well on these, near these plates here. And there's a hole there. So that's the shrinkage. Now the pour wasn't the best, I don't think. Uh, these little um, these little things, I think it might be where the two coolish flows of aluminium go in, and they kind of. God, I can't believe how uh, light aluminium is. It's crazy. <laughs> this thing weighs nothing. All right, so the gates, the gates were okay. So here's the new module. And, uh, oh, let's have a look how they are next to each other. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I've no idea whether it's actually 90 degrees. It's probably going to be a little less. It's bang on! It is bang on! Oh no it isn't. God damn it. Okay, so it's a degree or two off. I think that's perfect for gripping sand. Not bad. I think I need to have a slightly faster pour. I think that's what's happening here. I think it's a little cool and the the kind of wave fronts of aluminium aren't joining properly there because of the uh, the the oxide. The layer is just freezing before it even uh, squidges there. So that is interesting. So. There is a very slight bow to it now. And... Ah, I wonder if it's because this side has shrunk. So this side is the thicker. This is where most of the aluminium is. Uh, this base, base plate here at its thickest is seven millimeters. So this black bit all the way along is solid aluminium, this side. And if that side shrinks more than this thin side, I don't know really how it works. I wonder if it's kind of pulled itself in. Maybe these ribs here should be a tad thicker. I think these ribs need to be two millimeters thicker. And I'm not sure about these. I will give it another go. I think I'll put a bit more draft on. But I, I'm kind of preferring the look of this. A, a bolt, a pin go through that would also work, I suppose, with, a, with a, an accurate drill press. I guess the point is to get this, make it up into a, a square or a rectangle. And then when that is sitting square, then drill the hole. I don't know, we'll have to, uh, once I get this casting properly, the next challenge will be to 
try and fix these. I think drilling holes and bolts will do it. Uh, and then putting it on something flat and then tightening them carefully until it stays flat. You might need to, uh, because of the strange, it's only like um, a millimetre, but that might also account for the, the very slight, the loss of the 90, and make, and it's more like 88 degrees now rather than 90. goes in at least 15 millimetres in there. Nice flat surface though. Oh, I can hear the owl. Ridges came out nicely. corner pieces seem to work well. I think I need to thicken up these ribs here just a tiny bit to allow a little bit more flow into there um, just to try and prevent this this kind of thing here where the two wave fronts are meeting. Uh, not much just a millimeter or two that's it uh, but the corner piece that seems to work really well and the slots seem to be good and this thickness here seems good really this piece is pretty good apart from the uh, obvious problem we had with that sand sticking in there I mean that actually would be totally usable this piece I think because these are quite thin, I think this has shrunk more and I think we need to thicken these up to allow a little bit more, e maybe perhaps e more even shrinkage everywhere because I think these are freezing early because they're super thin which is good so you're getting nice but that kind of means that as the whole piece shrinks these are in compression but they can't compress anymore so the only bit that can shrink is this front edge so I think that is making that bend over so I think if we thicken these up a tiny bit I think that'll be better all round I love these corner pieces these extension pieces here are perfect I think I'm going to try again with this piece if I make all the drafts a little little bit more maybe 10 degrees rather than 7 I don't know, I'm in, I'm in two minds. I think just having the holes, I think just having some holes on the back might help remove the piece better. I don't know, I'm gonna, it's late now and uh, I've broken a very expensive lens so I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit gutted. <laughs> but this could have been a lot worse. So there we go, that's where we're at. Lovely flat corner, lovely flat surface there. Little bit of uh, shrinkage there where the gate went in. That's something I've got to keep an eye on. But this top edge is lovely and smooth. As are these sort of wings. And the same there. You can actually see, if I put them both together, you can see there's a very, in the middle, there's a, like a millimetre gap. So, strangely, the thick, the, the one with all the aluminium in, the thickest one, that's the most bowed. And the, this one, with the least aluminium in, is the least bowed. Because of these, I'm going to kind of ignore that result and see what happens next time. But this uh, LM25 aluminium is lovely stuff.
I've left the bottoms rough. So I'm, I'm reprinting um, the models. My plan, I've had a good think after yesterday's trauma. And what I've done is these two handle pieces. So Tobo Mott, or basically I've been uh, stalking Tobo on, it's just been pure coincidence, but it, it's been looking like I've been stalking Tobo. <laughs> I've been looking at uh, loads of different methods of attaching pins and different mechanisms, you know. And I joined a forum that I didn't realize that Tobo was in. And I went through all the, uh, the annoying sort of sign up procedures. And then the, finally I was allowed in. And the first thing I searched was um, pin mechanisms. And it's a kind of a, a aluminium casting uh, forum. And it was a post by Tobo. He was asking everyone what their mechanisms were like. And it was just brilliant to see all these things. And Tobo's was really cool. And then he then linked, at the very end of the thread, he linked a newer version he'd done. So yeah, at the moment, I'm sh gonna shamelessly <laughs> copy his. <laughs> But we'll see. Um, I'll put a link in the description to his. It's a fairly long video. It's an, an amusing watch, so I recommend you watch it all. But I will put a timestamp, if I can, to the bit that is talking about the pins, because that's um, relevant to what we're talking about now. Ah, so the reason I started talking about Tobo was he, during our conversations about pins and things, and in some comments to my part one and part two videos, he asked me if I could put these two handle pieces here, if I could make sure that the gap between this surface here and this first handle was about 15, 20 millimeters. Now, as you can see, it's about nine. It's not much. And that got me thinking actually, because now I've done this one and I have done it on my new model as a test, I've moved both of these handles down so that they're now central. There's a bit of, this one is moved this way and this one is moved that way. They're the same both way around. And it means that there's a bit of a gap on both sides so you don't get your fingers pinched. I realized that with this method, if you put a pin through, you could only bolt it on, on this plate and there wasn't enough room for a, a bolt here. Whereas if these things are in the middle, you can, you can choose where to put your bolt. You can have one on either side of that as well. So that's one major-ish uh, change. Because of how solid and strong this is, I realize that this might be overdoing it, this depth of these ribs and everything. So I've just taken two or three millimeters off that. So now the whole thing is a little bit less uh, greedy on aluminum and everything. And it's a little bit more like a flat plate, but with some ribs on it, rather than just 90% ribs. So that's lower. I've also thickened up, just by one millimeter, thickened up these ribs here. So now they're a millimeter thicker. So I thought a bit more aluminum will get, get in there. And because I've reduced this height, I've kind of crushed it to the floor a bit. There's no, re no need to have these wings so long. So I've reduced those by about six millimeters too. And because this is crushed down a bit, I've also reduced the height of the handles a bit. And I was mistaken. When I made these handles, I made them with five degrees of draft. I thought I made them with seven. Actually, everything else is seven uh, because that I found from experience to be the the minimum draft I can get away with if I'm really careful. Now I put five on these because I wanted them to jut out so much, but not have the base really thick. So in the new model where they're spaced in the middle, I've made them seven degrees draft and I've shrunken them down a little too, to kind of compensate so that they're not sort of super thin at the very end. Um, so I think it's a little bit better in general. And this one, this thing here, this strange piece now doesn't have those. This bit's been, I've taken both of those out, but what I have done is this edge here, 
I've thickened it by an extra five millimeters and there as well. So those two bits are gone, but it's as if that one has moved to there and that one has moved to there. And that will mean that you can still attach something. Um, I just felt that these were too small. I mean, the, the sand was so delicate in there. Um, and it just be, I'm gonna try and make it as easy as possible to print. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to put blooming holes in again, didn't I? Oh, I might have to stop the printer. What was I thinking? I forgot the holes to withdraw it. Oh, I'll tell you what I did do. So these, these little grooves, they came out really well, but because, the, because I wanted to use the grooves as kind of little bashy spots to, to kind of bash it sideways when I'm releasing the mold, I actually made them, so these are three millimeter grooves and three, three millimeters deep. I actually made them four millimeters and four millimeters deep. So considerably larger. Um, and I thought that might make using a tool in them a bit better. So yeah, so this is version two, 2.0. By reducing the bulk, I'm hoping to reduce big old voids like that. But it would still be perfectly usable. And I'll be very interested in, I've got plenty of aluminum down here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna melt these until we're probably done with the whole project. I'm gonna write on the back version 2.0. And I'll keep a record of what's happened. And there you go, V2 on the ends. So yeah, this was five degree draft. So that was really asking for trouble. It's no wonder that that wedge of sand got stuck in there. Absolutely no wonder. In fact, if you can see, it's a blooming miracle that I managed to stick that back in. And you can see the little, the ridge where the aluminium seeped underneath the, the bit I stuck back down. <laughs> I was very lucky. So yeah, these have now got seven degrees. That should be a lot more forgiving. I mean, still not insanely forgiving. Uh, I had a chat with Perry and I think he uses at least 12, I think, degrees draft. And I'm with him on that. 12 degrees is much easier than, than uh, nine or seven or five even. But because I needed them to be thin and also jut out. I don't know, I'm gonna go with seven and see what happens. Uh, as they're gonna be a bit shorter, maybe it will work. But you know, I'm, I'm fully prepared to do 10 versions. Um, and if it gets a bit boring and a bit samey, I won't sort of publish them all. I'll just kind of show you the, the ends rather than having to, because it, it's gonna be exactly the same. Uh, making up the mold is gonna be exactly the same each time. And I'll probably just show you the end result rather than me. Um, I'll probably show you the, the screw-ups or the exciting bit when I remove the mould or the exciting bit when I remove the patterns maybe and uh, leave all the actual sort of ramming and stuff. It's a bit boring to watch. All right. Bye. Oh, and news about my camera lens. So, yeah. It's, it's really quite badly broken, but I found a really, really top notch, top five places in Britain to get your lovely lenses repaired. And it's only an hour away. So I'm going to ring them tomorrow and have a chat with the guy. Apparently he's awesome. And I'm gonna get the damn thing fixed. That's good news. I was kind of really gutted that I'd actually wrecked it and I was basically worthless and I'd have to buy a new one. But uh, no, that is not the case at all. So hooray! We're back in business! Plus also I've got these prime lenses, so even though I can't zoom in with them, at least I can still shoot stuff. But they're lovely and clear and bright, so that's one good thing. I'll have to kind of go back to basics. And uh, bye!